All right, what's up, guys? So the channel, um, not Nilo, me. Yeah, Nilo, Nilo. I hey, look, bro, I'm not good with names, but anyways, they have uploaded a video titled "When Comedians Destroy Woke Hecklers." Yeah, honestly, though, that's the best thing that you can do as a comedian. You are you are gonna get those hecklers where, and this guy, I've seen where he ain't got some hecklers before, but no, it's like you are um at times gonna see um hecklers where they just they feel like that they need to say something and it's like fam this is a comedy show like you're you're not supposed to for one you're not supposed to uh say anything while the comedian's up there i mean yeah you know might want to blurt out something funny but it's like if you're blurting out something and it's because you're upset about whatever they're talking about fam just get up and leave i feel like that would be less embarrassing than you saying something and then you're you know you end up being the whole segment of the stand of the uh guys um you know his like comedy thing and things so yeah it's just something where it's like fam if somebody says something to upset you walk away do not be a heckler right but anyways make sure you guys go subscribe to the, the this channel nilo nilo i don't know but anyways make sure you go subscribe to the channel show love show support but anyways the white guy trying to talk to black people i'm no, not bitch. no you're not politics ain't funny hey you need to stop pissing off people start doing real jokes Comedians just want to make people laugh. However, some people get offended really easily over simple jokes. And today, we'll be watching those people get the destroyed by the comedians they, they are trying Smith to point. heckle. So let's get started with this situation with Troy Bond. This would end with the heckler crying and having to oh, leave yeah. the show. But I think this is the one he was like, he called, I, it's either her or somebody else where he called them uh, Kamala Harris. And she got so upset. I think, uh, um, I think Troy Bond, like, I, it, it ain't like noticeable, but I think he is like part black or something like that. But I, I, I don't know. But I, that's from what I've heard. I don't know that for a fact. But anyways, let's go back to where it all started. Like this crowd feels feels great, but it's it's gonna get good soon. <laughs> if any politician did stand up in history, they could have avoided controversy. I voted for Joe Biden, but that shit didn't feel great. <laughs> Felt like I was giving grandpa the keys to the Oldsmobile <laughs> and telling him to drive to California. <laughs> that was the best of a bad situation. I give credit where credit is due. I'm probably the most pro anti-Trump no. comic out there. That no, month, you're not shut the enough. fuck up! No, you shut the fuck up. As a white guy trying to talk to black people, I'm no, not. Bitch, no, you're not. Yes, I wasn't. No, you were. You just you tuned were in. You were trying to. Well, I, you were trying to. For what? What are you upset about? It's not me. No, and shut up. Any black person ever tried to laugh at his fucking jokes? No. Stop having fun, motherfuckers. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Stop having fun. Can we get her an ad or something? Wow. <laughs> Are you serious? See, yeah, no, no that's what happens. Black, no, you're white listen, trying listen, to like listen. talk about. No, and you. My probation officer is here now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you're mad at, but it's not me. <laughs> no, a white person trying to make fun of black people. See, now you're crying, and we, I was just trying to make you laugh. No, don't do that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna make fun. I was trying to be no, empathetic. <laughs> It was not. No. I don't care. You trying to it's like... like who my thing is this. If you go to a comedy club and you start crying because somebody done upset you, that's not again, you're embarrassing yourself. Cry because the comedian then says something funny to where it it brings out laughing tears. You start doing the crying stuff. I'm saying even if I'm a comedian and I say something, the person gets upset and they get the crying. I if he's cracking jokes, I'm just gonna stand there and look at them like you are you done? Can I can I go back to my thing? Yeah, he he's trying to be empathetic. Me on the other hand, I'm like I I don't care. I'm like I'm I'm gonna spin around the circle. It's gonna take a few seconds. Once when that circle is done, I'm still not gonna care. It's it's one of those things of like you can leave, you know, go to your uh freaking accord and you drive on home. But I'm like, fam, I I, I don't care. I I guarantee and I promise you I'm not gonna care. Laugh at that shit. That's How cool. dare I at a comedy club? <laughs> <laughs> she came here for a TED talk. <laughs> Everybody knows you go to the basement for political opinion. <laughs> I don't even know what he's saying, but it just shit sounds tense. <laughs> you a bitch. 
<laughs> Why do you think I'm doing this for a living? You think I was a football player? I'm a bitch, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> There's nothing you can say to me. I haven't said six inches from the mirror. <laughs> You're the first name going in my suicide note tonight. <laughs> Have a good night, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Now's the time I need you on my side. No, no, that was the most racist joke ever. No, no. I, I, I got no. like four more in the chamber. No. <laughs> is she, why is she, that, nah, you crying that hard over it, that's crazy. Yeah, that's something where I'm all like, I probably would have started cracking jokes then because I'm like, that's insane. You get, my thing is this, you done driven all the way out to a comedy club. You done stopped at three and a half red lights. My thing is, is this. You get there and you have some emotional breakdown. Yeah, don't don't be surprised if you end up being a part of the comedy show. But anyway, that's crazy. Wait, don't drop the scarf, man. That was $3 at Dollar Tree, man. <laughs> yeah, go pick up the gun she left under the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so horny for no reason right now. <laughs> Don't bully me, I'll come, bitch. <laughs> Is that so? I see where people be wearing that as a t-shirt. That'd be crazy. I don't know if that's like his own personal shirt or if he just said that scene. But if my thing is this, like if he don't know and that was the first time that was ever said, I'm like Bam. somebody out there making millions off of your quotes after completely destroying the heckler he would just continue with the show yeah. and even poke fun at her further showing how he won but the next situation is with sammy obeed who would also end up getting called racist for the jokes he was making so let's start off with those jokes and then we can see just how he destroys the heckler i went to uc berkeley i majored in math yeah all right <laughs> Go Bears, we got a lot of bears up in this. I majored in math, which is why I do comedy now. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like math, but half of us are math people. Half of the world is technically above the 50th percentile. You know what I mean? If you don't know what that means, you're below it. That's just a simple test, right? It's a mean joke, if you know what I mean. But I write a lot of math jokes, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to use my degrees, pun intended. Now, people don't really respect them. Like, I can't go up to a girl at the bar like, hey girl, your legs make a triangle so right. <laughs> what did the triangle say to the square when they were buying a house together? Cosine, Sammy Obey, nice to meet you. I should be in, uh, I should be in right there. But no, she's yelling at me, she's going off on a tangent. You know what I'm saying? On the tangent, guys, these are math jokes. They're all math jokes, they're all math jokes. All right. Like, My family's originally from Beirut. Look, she, you can tell whoever that girl is. Nah, this girl right here, yeah, she, she getting upset. Uh, yeah, thank you. Go Beirut. I've never been there. I've been to New York, which is a little closer. Now, in New York and on the East Coast, they call the game Beer Pong Beirut. I didn't know that. Yeah, they call it Beer Pong Beirut. My friend in New York's like, hey, bro, you want to play Beirut? What kind of creepy racist question is that? <laughs> He's like, come on, man, it'll be fun. I was like, all right. So I took him hostage. I didn't know how the, the house was. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm part Lebanese and I'm part Palestinian, so I'm in the news all the time right now. Now, it's crazy because I'm Palestinian and my roommate is Jewish. So <laughs> we always fight over where his room starts and mine ends, okay? So, I mean, <laughs> he pays more rent, but I've been there longer, you feel me, all right? You feel me? And we look the same. Now, it's tricky, I understand it. It's tricky because I, I, can, Jews I can feel, I can just feel somebody about to go on. We were in Israel first a very long, long time ago. They were there, but then they left, you know, they left. It's like you leave your towel on the bench press at the gym and then you go, you know, you leave for three hours. Someone's going to grab that towel and wrap it around their head. But the thing is, <laughs> we share culture all the time, me and my roommate. I asked him, I said, hey man, what do you like most about being Jewish? He's like, I never thought about that before. I was like, just give me something off the top of your head. So he gave me his yarmulke. And uh, I'm kidding. He sold it to me. Come on, these are all fun jokes. Everybody has a good time. Bridge the cultural relations. It's very important. It's good. What's that? It's that you stop picking off people. Start doing real jokes. I'm just going to repeat what he said, and, uh, and I'm not lying. He said, you need to stop picking on people and start telling real jokes. 
What? Now, I'm like, but every, notice how when the guy said that, not one person cared. This man has been, ever since he stepped foot on that stage, he's been having that crowd going off, laughing, all that stuff. So I think that's just something that a heckler, you like, that That should tell you. It's like, fam, don't stop it. Don't say nothing else. Just leave it alone, bruh. But it's, when my thing is this, it's very, very rare when I have seen videos where hecklers done said something and they just take over the whole crowd. Like, crowd is cracking up, laughing, tears rolling down their face. Rare occasions, you know, but other than that, it's like, like fam everybody's cracking up laughing it's one of those things where it's like if you find yourself getting upset get up and leave bro just that's that's honestly the best thing that you can do just get up leave i know people are like oh i paid my money to come off in here and stuff and it's like okay well it's you should have looked at the my thing is this i'm not gonna go to a comedy club i guess like if i if there's like maybe yeah maybe a friend of mine's that's gonna be up there performing them like okay you know i'm there for my friend and that's it whoever else is there beforehand i probably will uh um wait uh, like if i'm not yeah finding their stuff funny i'm like okay i'll excuse myself go outside wait i'm like hey let me know when you get up on stage and then you know so on and so on but yeah it's just one of those things where it's all like fam it, it's just just leave if they're upsetting you Look, now he's getting booed. Why hey. are you applauding hey. yourself, you jackass? My, my brother, okay, look. I'm a person, you're a person. I'm talking about real shit. Majoring in math, did that. Palestinian Jewish roommate, did that. Family from Beirut, did that shit. This is all real shit, brother. This is all real shit. This is my life. Talk your talk. This is my life. You don't like talking about race? Are you, you don't like talking about race? Is that your thing? It's the cheap way out. It's the cheap way out, man. Well, you know what? Race is a reality to me, man. I'm like, but that's how is that a cheap? When you see some of the like greatest comedians to ever live and stuff, like when you see guys like Bernie Mac, like yeah, just even watching the original Kings of Comedy, was there a moment in that whole like comedy special where they did not talk on race? I'm saying you look at a lot of. I guarantee and I promise you, any comedian out there then talked on race before. Might have been negative, might have been positive, but they done talked on race. That's just the thing, all right? If they haven't, it's something where it's like, I don't know, maybe they are trying to challenge themselves, and then that's probably why, but you see it often, bro. It, it ain't like, it, it's a cheap way out. I've never heard that before, but anyways. And it's the reality to most people, and I'm making light of it. I'm making light of it, brother. Why would the majority of the crowd be booing you if it's, did I have a turban? No, I do not have a turban. However, I will say, okay, I was, look, you had a turban growing up, I did it. Is that what you're saying? I get mistaken for being Indian all the time. And I, it, it annoys me too because there's a difference, bro. People are like, you're sure. Indian. I'm not fucking Indian. You can't just pick any brown person and call us Indian. You're not Columbus. That one's for you. <laughs> that one's for you. Ah, dead. There's nothing wrong dead. with being Indian. All right. Get out. No, 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 no. I'm not stopping you. I'm stopping you. You are handled. Let him finish his set. Thank you. But oh, that wow. was a master of work. I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Sorry. I won't pick on anyone. I won't do any more racial jokes, okay? I'm just saying my best friend is Indian, so it's an arranged friendship, and we're very close. <laughs> and I was born here in Oakland, and I was raised in Fremont. Fremont is a lot like Oakland, less urban, more turban, if you know what I mean. And that's, uh, thank you so much. My name is Samuel Bay. This is real shit. This is real shit. Real shit. Thank you so much. And we have another situation with Sammy once again. But this time, it's a heckler being upset over politics, and he gets completely embarrassed. You know, or we can just stop. I hope it ain't the comedian. It's like, nah, bro, don't don't do that. Don't don't show no embarrassment as a comedian. But anyways, anyways. I'd bomb anyone, man. Another alternative. Politics ain't funny. That one too, I guess. You wanna? Oh, you, oh, you don't like everything that I'm talking about, basically. Is that what's going on? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, he probably was expecting nobody to hear him and things, and he realized how quiet it was. Like, yeah, that's something where it's like, you know, at times you just got to kind of test out the room and, see, you know, so maybe with a laugh, sneeze, cough, something. But, yeah, it's like, don't just blurt out some stuff. Then when they call you out on it, then you just kind of want to, like, just sit and be looking like, uh, dang, like they, they kind of they kind of just put me on the spot. Yeah, you brought that on yourself. Out of luck for the next 30 minutes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. 
Politics ain't funny. That's got to be the worst take I ever heard, bro. <laughs> Politics is some funny shit, man. Room, right? What's up? Read the room. Read the room. Yeah, exactly. I thought we saw like, bro, they were just cheering for him. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Room red. <laughs> clear. Everybody loves political comedy, just not at the same time. <laughs> That's how it works. You hear the comedian say something you like, you laugh, and then you wait till they say something you like again, and then you laugh. And then for the rest, you politely shut your freedom hole. That's how you, <laughs> that's how you enjoy comedy in the U.S. of A. <laughs> but finally, we have a situation with Nimesh Patel in which the woke heckler is actually being racist. And this is just crazy because of how nonchalant Nimesh is about the whole thing. There, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Are you white? <laughs> you are. <laughs> you want to go fuck him up? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, bro? George. She speaks plenty of Indovero. Sit down. It's fine. George, you're welcome to go. You think I'm kidding? We were we were so close to the end, man. We were so close to making it to the end without experiencing Boston's racist bullshit, and now. <laughs> Thank you, George. I have heard for... some. No, I just remember. I think, uh, um, I think it is with the Boston Celtics where there is all like that. I heard some fans that can. I ain't gonna say all the fans, but there can be some fans that's there where you know you you might hear some uh, racist things. Like, and if they don't they don't know what your race is, they'll look it up on the end of like the most racist joke for insert race here and yeah you know I, I heard some things about boston so yeah it's just it's it's one of those things where it's like yeah the that's just crazy though it's like the man i they, again guy did test the room you got you got to do a cough sneeze something you know so it's like you could test like the the audio frequency of the room to see like okay how loud is this gonna be if i say something and stuff so like you know but don't go don't please do not go out and say no racist things that's crazy believe in a fucking dis disgust in my mouth for this people named george at least <laughs> you piece of shit <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy, man. It's like you got some hecklers out there where it's like they just they they just want to be heard. They want somebody to hear them. And it's like, fam, we don't care. We do not care at all. But anyways, make sure if you guys have it, go subscribe to either Nilo or Nilo for more videos like this. Like, subscribe to me too, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace.